Hello and welcome. Now in my earlier video, I talked about the various data ingestion options available at Microsoft Fabric. We did some cost benefit analysis and benchmarked the different ingestion options to figure out which option works best in what scenario. Now continuing along the same theme of figuring out the cost of the various activities in this video, I want to figure out what is the cost of executing a Fabric Warehouse query. Now you would say, hey, that should be straightforward. We can go to the Fabric Capacity Metrics app and get that information. Well, it's not that straightforward. Let's figure out how the whole thing works in this video. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I have the stored procedure, which is basically a bunch of create tables and insert values into tables. Uh, and this stored procedure, when I execute it, it takes around two minutes to execute. Now I want to figure out if any of these queries are expensive. And so this will give me valuable information about the cost in Fabric and if I need to fine tune any of them. So let's, let's head out to the Fabric Capacity app and see if I can find this information. Okay, here I am in the Fabric Capacity app and then I've drilled down to the particular day when I executed the stored procedure. And if you notice, there's a bunch of things that happened here, but I'm more, what I'm interested is in the warehouse query. So that would be this line of data here. And this gives me a high level information. Okay, this is the amount of CUs used and the duration. Now, this is at a high level because I'm doing a bunch of other stuff in the in the data warehouse. I want, I want to look at a particular stored procedure and within that individual queries as well. So what I'm gonna do now is basically figure out what time I execute this stored procedure and, and explore this data further. Okay, now I have drilled into a particular time point. So this is the time point when this query was executed. Now, this is an important thing to know. And as we talk about this, I will mention it a little more in detail, but just remember it, this is the time point. And this gives me a lot of information, right? Uh, this back, because it's a background job, I'm looking at this range and background operations, there was a bunch of them that was executed. So I just want to filter down to a particular operation. I know mine was a warehouse query, so I'm going to filter down to that. And once that filters, I'll hopefully get more information. There you go. Now I see that, okay, this, is promising because now I have a data warehouse query which was executed around the start of 828 and ended at 829. See, that's the thing which I'm trying to figure out. It, it started and ended at 828 to 829, but the time point I had to pick was 930 to 931. So I'm not sure why I had to do that, but anyway, that's again, I guess, improvement. Hopefully that'll happen with the Fabric Metrics app. We'll see. Okay, so I got this information, but now again, this is still, I don't know what command was executed. There was a bunch of commands executed in this time frame, with the total totals to 104 seconds. That's about two minutes. So it looks like that's the stored procedure I executed, but I don't know which command. So how do I get to that? Now, what I did was I went into edit mode of this report and expanded out the time point background detail table. Now, everything comes from this table. What I did was I added this operation ID to this table. Now this gives me the operation ID of each of the individual queries that were executed. And I'm going to take this and run it against a view that is provided in the data warehouse. Now, if I go back to the data warehouse with to the SQL endpoint of the data warehouse and expand out query insights, views, you see this first one, exec request history, that captures all the queries that have been executed against this data warehouse. So I, uh, this is the operation ID I took from the capacity metrics app. So now I am filtering out this table where by distribution statement ID equals the operation ID I selected. And when I execute this, I get the output, which also has the command that was executed. And it also gives me batch ID. And if I select this batch ID and run the query against this, then I'll get the all the queries that were executed in this batch, which in my case was a stored procedure. So let's see that. Now, once I execute this query where batch ID is the value that I selected, now I can see all the commands that were executed here and the cost or the time to duration of each of them. Now, the, this doesn't still give me the CU. It just gives me the duration because I have the start and end time and total time elapsed. So it gives me the duration, but not the, in terms of CUs, I still don't have it, have the number. 
So let's see if I can do a better, uh, is there a better way of doing this? Maybe I can bring it all into Power BI Desktop, maybe, and try to create a model and try to figure this out. Now, here we are in the Power BI Desktop. So what I did was I downloaded the Capacity Metrics app, opened it up in Power BI Desktop. And then to this, I added another direct query. So this is a direct query to the SQL endpoint of the data warehouse. So this is what I did. So I connected to the SQL endpoint and then I could select the query insights and the view. And this gives me basically a direct query into the view that we were looking at in the data warehouse. Now, once this information is available, since I know operation ID relates to the distributed statement ID in the, in the view, I created a relationship. And now I was able to build this visual. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind here. First thing is when you build this visual, you have to select the time point. This time Without this time point, and nothing works. So you, this time point is the same that we selected in the Capacity Metrics app, which was 9.30 p.m. And this bottom table you see here is basically the data from the, the view, the query insights view with the command and the statement ID and the total time elapsed. And the top table is comes from the metrics app, which we saw earlier, we saw the time point background detail table. So basically comes from the same table. I'm getting the duration, the operation ID, which we talked about earlier, the start and the total CUs. So once we have this information, now I, I can, for example, select this particular command. So how much did this take this took 42 seconds uh, you know it's i think there's some rounding but you know this is 42 seconds and it took 334 cus so i can go through each of these commands and see how much how much is it costing me how many cus if some some of them is really expensive then i can go and see if i can fine tune it and you know make make bring down my cost right so i think this is really helpful in the long run as we go in this fabric journey to figure out each cost for each of these individual activities. As always, if you've got any questions, reach out to us, obvious.com.